This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Lord, um, thank you for the opportunity to serve in your kingdom, Father God. Thank you just for supplying all of my need, Lord, and for having good plans for me, Father, and for all of your children, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, um, some months ago, maybe like three months ago, it was like early summer, so I can't remember. Maybe I don't remember, but it's it's been around the summertime. Um, I just felt God was ministering to me about children and about the times, about this being like, you know, with this being the end times, we have to be very careful how we raise our, raise our children, how we teach our children. And, um, you know, because if you think about it for thousands of years or, you know, ever since Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate the fruit from the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil, we have been suffering. We have been suffering from the results of one decision that they made. And so what the Holy Spirit was ministering to me about with this being the end times, we don't have time to be reversing um, poor parenting, to be reversing poor stewardship over our children. Like this time is crucial for the way that we raise children, okay? Um, with this being a time of deception being high and things like that, um, we have to be especially careful with the way we teach our children. You know, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it says that we should be um, talking to them about God and spending time with them, educating them about the Bible and teaching them about God and his ways. OK, and so um, this is just encouragement that if you have children of your own children that you, you know, grandchildren, um, if you teach children in church, what have you, don't take it for granted because um, God's heart is over all of his children, all who are his. But um, it's especially time to be mindful, attentive, vigilant, intentional um, with the way that we are raising children, with the way that we are raising children and what we are instilling into children. You can't let the t television raise the children, okay? You can't let the kids watch the kids, okay? We have to discipline the children starting early, okay? And um, I remember when um, I first started having dreams about the Bible. I wasn't yet really reading my Bible all like that. Um, and I remember having two dreams in close proximity. One of them, I, there was a conversation in my mind. I don't know if God was talking to me, who was talking to me, but they were asking me, what did I think about um, the story of the people of Nineveh? Or, and I, I think they was asking me, what did I think about, you know, Jonah on his way to Nineveh, how Jonah had first you know, he, he went to Tarshish. He went the opposite way of what God told him. But I just started looking in the Bible about Nineveh and about the people of Nineveh. Then I had a dream and I heard somebody saying something about the book of Nathan the prophet. They was saying something about the book of Nathan the prophet. And from what I knew about the Bible, there was no Bible called Nathan. No, there's no book of the Bible called Nathan and or no book of the Bible called Nathan the prophet. But the dream was like so real. It felt so real that I woke up looking for that book in the Bible. So I skimmed through and looked at it. And I was like, no, I, you know, I'm like, I knew it wasn't in there. So I let it go. I didn't think about it anymore. But then one day I was reading First Chronicle to chapter 29, verse 29. And it said, and the rest of these events are recorded in the book of Nathan, a prophet. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. OK, so again, um, you know, when the scripture was first first breathed out, when uh, God first sat somebody down and gave them his word, they were scrolls. It was not no one Bible. It was just different scrolls. And it wasn't until the Council of Nicaea many years later where 
um, a group of people got together and they were discerning what should be part of the Bible and what should not be part of the Bible. But at some point, there really was um, a scroll called the Book of Nathan the Prophet, okay? So um, it's just uh, a reminder. Oh, because also like two and a half years ago or something like that, I had a dream about... I went into this building and there were these children. They were lined up in uniform. They were in white gloves. It was a pretty building they were in. Outside, there were school buses of kids leaving. Inside, they were like, um, I could tell that the building was used to teach children trades, to educate children. And I had a similar dream again recently where there was a huge building. And, um, you know, the building was beautiful. And in the center, there were table and chairs and the children were sitting down, you know, doing their work. But um, I feel like in this time, some leaders will be raised up and I feel like I will be. I haven't gotten the whole blueprint of the plan, but I do believe I'm called to um, be teaching children. Um, and not necessarily in a classroom, but according to how it, it is that God wants to raise them up. But um he he will be raising up leaders who will be caring for children and, and educating children. And um, people who he can trust children with. People who he can trust children to in their care. Okay. And. Um, oh, just a reminder, just be mindful of your dreams. Just be mindful of your dreams. You know, start to write down things that happen in your dreams and um, pray to God and ask him about the things that you see or hear in your dreams. You know, what is he trying to communicate to you? It's been so much stuff I learned in my dreams that I didn't know was that way in life. I remember in my dream, I heard some, you know, there was this guy and he was singing a song and I was like, what? That guy is, uh, that guy is black. And I just, I heard the song before. I never knew who sang it, but I assumed the guy was white and I looked online and sure enough, the guy was black and, uh, it's just about all kind of stuff. Uh, it's just about all kind of stuff, but, uh, yeah, just be mindful of your dreams. Start to write down, you know, like keep a notebook and pen or pencil by your bed and start to write down things that you hear or that you dream and, you know, give it back to God in prayer and ask for more revelation or deeper understanding. And, uh, yeah, be good stewards over the children that you have in your life, whether they're yours or whosoever they are, you know, speak goodness into them. Speak goodness into them. Be patient with them. Some people talk to kids terribly, 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 terribly. I overhear conversations sometimes of the parents dropping their kids off at school and it's just like terrible. Those are horrible, bitter seeds being sown into their lives. So be patient with children. Be appropriate with the children ask God for patience father God in the name of Jesus we thank you that you are the God who created and established the heavens and the earth the earth is yours the fullness thereof and all of they who dwell in it Lord Lord we know that you created us for your glory father God and we just pray right now father God that you will teach us to behave in godly ways teach us to be holy because you are holy teach us to be perfect father god um, teach us to be in this world but not conform to this world but to be renewed by to be if our minds to be renewed and washed in your word father god um Help us to be responsible with the finances you give us, Lord, with the family that you give us, Lord, with the children that may even just be in a neighborhood looking up to us, Father God. Help us to be truthful in speech, Father God, may, that no corrupt communication may come from our mouths, Father God. Help us to be particular, Lord, in the music that we listen to, the television shows that we watch, the company that we keep even, Father God. Help us to begin to cleanse our environment, Father God, to cleanse our environment, to get rid of all the filth 
that may be surrounding us, Father God, to, to be separate, to be called out, Father God, to walk worthy of the high calling to which you have called us, Father God. Help us to be the, the royal priesthood, Father God, the holy nation, Father God, that you have called us to be, Lord. Help us to be kingdom-minded, Father God, and not worldly-minded, Father God. And help us to seek you in all things, Father God. Help our standard of righteousness to be based on your true and living word, Father God. We thank you that you are the only true and wise God. We thank you that you're all knowing. We thank you that you have all power, Father God. We thank you that you protect us with your righteous right hand, Father God. We thank you for the uh, that we can rest in the, in the secret place of you, the Most High, Father God, and there no evil shall befall us, Father God. We just thank you for being a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, Redeemer, a merciful Savior, and an awesome Ruler, Father God. In Jesus' name, Amen.